Do you know the worst sort of criticism? That which comes from your friends, especially when it's unfounded. You want to clap back at them, but at the same time, you don't want to spoil the friendship. That's India and Iran right now. Iran's supreme leader has leveled some serious allegations against India. He says Indian Muslims are suffering. Of course, New Delhi has hit back at the claim. The foreign ministry says, look who is talking. I know it sounds like a typical diplomatic tiff, but there's more at play here. It's a reflection of where India-Iran ties are at. So tonight, we're taking a closer look at this relationship. But first, the controversy. This is Islamic Unity Week in Iran, so the Supreme Leader gathered some of the top religious scholars. Listen to what he told them, and I'm quoting, We cannot consider ourselves to be Muslims if we are oblivious to the suffering that a Muslim is enduring in Myanmar, Gaza, India, or any other place. He mentioned three names. Gaza, where 40,000 Muslims have been killed by Israel. Myanmar, where 700,000 Muslims were expelled. And then India, in the same bracket. The comparison makes no sense whatsoever. India has the third largest Muslim population in the world. There are more Muslims in India than in Iran. And their rights are guaranteed by a secular constitution. Yet Iran clubs India with Gaza. It's clearly a political statement, one that is supposed to appease the Supreme Leader supporters. But New Delhi has hit back. Look at the Foreign Ministry statement, and I'm quoting again. We strongly deplore the comments made regarding minorities in India by the Supreme Leader of Iran. Countries commenting on minorities are advised to look at their own record before making any observations about others. It is a fair point. Iran is a Shia Muslim country. Sunni Muslims are treated as second-class citizens there. They make up just 10% of the population. Sunnis, they're 10% of the population. Top Sunni clerics have accused the regime of discrimination. In fact, there isn't a single Sunni mosque in Tehran. Do you know why? Because the regime won't allow it. If this is how Iran treats Muslim minorities, you can imagine the rest. Yet the Supreme Leader targets India, and it's not a first. In 2017, he called Kashmir an oppressed nation. In 2019, he criticized India's decision to cancel Kashmir's special status. He called it an ugly act. And in 2020, he said Muslims are being massacred in India. Each time, New Delhi hit back. But this is a very sensitive issue for India because Iran is not Turkey or Pakistan. We have strong and long-standing ties with them. Back in 2001, India and Iran signed a defense cooperation deal. Until 2018, Iran was India's second largest oil supplier and India was Iran's second biggest client. So it was a win-win relationship, which is why New Delhi decided to build a port in Iran, the Chabahar port. Talks began way back in 2003, but it's taken a long time to sign a deal. Earlier this year, India and Iran inked a 10-year agreement. India will invest $120 million in Chabahar. It will also give $250 million in loans. For both countries, this is a big deal. Iran gets much-needed investments amid sanctions, and India gets access to a key port. Chabahar can be India's gateway to Central Asia and Afghanistan. So the business side is sorted. And the history is even better. Cultural ties between India and Iran go back centuries. Until 1947, we shared a direct border. So both sides know each other pretty well. There is no cultural or civilizational gap. Then what explains this frequent animosity? Well, it's largely because of politics, both internal and external. Whenever India and Iran gain momentum, something happens. In 2018, it was U.S. sanctions. Donald Trump cut off Iran from the oil market, so India stopped buying Iranian oil. Even Indian investments were put on hold. To beat this isolation, Iran turned to China. They signed a massive investment deal in 2021. China has promised to invest $400 billion in Iran. Let me repeat that, $400 billion over 25 years. So Iran has clearly picked sides in this conflict. It is Team China, which makes it complicated for India. Then you have the Gaza war. After the Hamas attack, India expressed support for Israel. New Delhi also defended Israel's right to hit back. Chances are that did not go down well with Iran. And we've seen that before. I mentioned the Supreme Leader's Kashmir criticism in 2017. That coincided with Prime Minister Modi's trip to Israel. So the big picture is quite clear. Yes, Iran values its relations with India, but not enough to stop these unwarranted comments. It's a political choice, not a religious one. 
Why else would Iran be silent on China's Uyghur genocide? That's a real crime against Muslims. China has detained more than a million Uyghurs in labor camps. Yet Iran's supreme leader has nothing to say about it. India has handled his, out his outbursts maturely. They haven't affected the strategic cooperation, but it does show why this relationship has never really taken off.